So that's his story in a nutshell. Uh, what I want to do now is I want to show you what he did, because I've left out his philosophy and I've left out his major achievements. I just wanted you to see the chaos of the world that he lives in. Let me check the time so I don't, so I time this a little bit. All right, his big piece, his opus magnum, of course, is the Canon of Metis. Here's what happens. When he was a teenager still, he noticed that what most people were calling medicine was just quackery. And by the time he gets to the point where he's writing the canon of medicine, canon comes from the Arabic word qanun. Qanun just means law. So it's literally the law of medicine. So you know, right, when you're in the university, they go, you have to read the canon. You have to read the law. You have to read the books that inform you about that subject matter. By the time he writes the canon of medicine, he notices something that, he, that was driving him nuts, and he spells it out. And that was the concept for disease in the world at the time was that there was disease. It was a singular thing. You eat fish, and you drank milk, and a black cat walked in front of you, and Jupiter was in alignment with Mars, and now you bleed from the eyes. But if the cat hadn't walked in front of you, it just had a little cough. And that was, and so it didn't matter what your disease was because it was just disease. There was no concept that there were different diseases and there were different ways of getting these diseases and they would affect you in different ways. So Ibn Sina says, okay, this is completely ludicrous. There are diseases, this is plural. They have different transmission vectors and then they affect you in a different way. And then he says, there are things that could be at stake. It's not whether you drank milk and ate fish, that's not, but your health might matter. And then he says, look, Here's a thousand cures. He says, cures are great, everybody loves them. What's better? Inter intervention, stop you from getting sick. Interrupt the transmission vectors. Don't allow yourself to get sick to begin with. If you can do, that's a lot better than having a cure. And that's the foundation for modern medicine. The goal is prevention. The goal is interrupt the transmission vectors. It, secondarily, you go to cures because you have to. But really, that's not ideal, that's not the goal. And then the other part of it is there are diseases. <laughs> and that's why he's the father of modern medicine. I, from time to time, people go, I looked it up and it said it was Hippocrates. That's the father of medicine. He's the father of modern medicine, in case you do this. By the way, I disapprove of Hippocrates being the father of medicine. I think it's, it should be like Pesachet, and then it would be the mother of medicine. She was a physician from about 4,500 years ago in Egypt. 